Our next guest is going long on energy as it climbs higher. Paul Sankey of Sankey Research joins us here on set. Paul, always great to see you. Oil must be 90 and above, right? I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> That's when we have you. Um, do we stay here? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, it, it, a lot of it, so much of this depends on governments. And what's driven us up has obviously been the Saudis. As you know, last year, the U.S. government was releasing a million barrels a day from the SPR. That's a huge amount of oil at the margin. A million barrels a day. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we've got the same effect now with Saudi having cut a million barrels a day. And, what, 10 days ago now, a week ago, they said they're going to maintain those cuts through the end of the year. So that million is going to be offline right through the end of the year. So... It looks like a very tight balance uh, as we head for Christmas, and obviously you're going to be nervous about winter. We don't know what's going to happen in winter, but you better be ready for it in case it's cold. So it looks like it'll be a pretty powerful uh, situation now into the year round. Now, having said that, Saudi had said last year they wanted $95 oil. Not publicly, but that was the number that they said they needed for their growth plans. They need 85 Brent for their budget. The question is, can Biden, the Biden administration in gender relations that allow the Saudis to say, OK, we'll back off this cut now, we're at 95. Or are they maybe going to do more SPR, or what are they going to do? We don't know. You've heard us waxing poetic in terms of valuations. These stocks, for example, I mentioned Marathon MPC, Marathon Petroleum, which you came and talked about in the fall of 21, it was a $60 stock, is basically tripled-ish. I think valuations are still compelling. Am I right or am I wrong? Well, you hesitate to say new paradigm. You know, this time it's different. We don't like to say it. But as you've all referenced, these, these stocks just buy back stock. You know, so they get the excess cash flow. If they have a great quarter, effectively the stock's worth 5% more simply because you know these managements now have, have got a new paradigm. And the new paradigm is we'll just pay it back to shareholders. And so, yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's a really positive refining environment. Although, again, it's somewhat caused by the Saudis cutting heavier sour barrels from the market, combined with the distillate problem that we have globally. How, if at all, does the election cycle play out in, in your oil forecast? I mean, you know, higher oil, the Biden administration is going to try and, and knock that down either by calling up Saudi Arabia or going there and saying, you know what, can you please back off, which they may or may not do. I mean, they haven't done that I think it's a big recently. deal, you know, because it's not an election year here, right? So do they, do they not do anything now and say, OK, let's just keep this in reserve? You know, let's keep an SPR, you know, download uh, because we've taken out half the SPR, right. you know, do we really? And it became public that it was just being sold to China, which didn't go over great. So, you know, at this point, it's very tough for them going into winter, rising prices, causing rising inflation, Fed having to keep, you know, things tight. And we're not in an election year makes it really tough. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what's been so tough about this year. You know, we got Russia wrong. Didn't happen in the way that we did. Now, we're looking at the Geek G7 saying we're not going to bother about the price cap anymore in Russian oil. So there's things they're doing at the margin. Iran has become the biggest supplier of oil to China. That's a problem for the Saudis. And, of course, you've got a little bit of marginal stuff coming out of Venezuela. That's why it's hard to call the oil price, because it's all government stuff. You know? right. So let's call the equity prices a little bit. And, and you talk to institutions. That's, that's what you've done your whole career. One, it feels like the institutional investor in the oil market is different. There are obviously dedicated resource players, but there was a lot of crossover stuff going on when the energy sector was 16 percent of the S&P back in 2008. Where do you see this going? And, and where do you see broader institutional interest in a resource sector where a lot of these folks were burned? And as you said, and as we've said, these companies are run differently. They're buying back stock. They can pay down debt at $60 oil. They're not the same companies. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. We had the big bar cap conference here, which is the energy kind of start to the year after Labor Day. And the feedback was it's incredible to think that Brent is above 90 and everyone's so negative. Yeah. That's the oil specialists. And I think the oil specialists are reluctant to capitalize Saudi cuts, you know, because we don't, if we get weak here, Saudi's got a double problem, right? Because then they're like, now we're at 9 million barrels a day. We've got 2 million barrels a day of spare capacity. Oil price is going down. Now how do we get our revenues? And so there could be a major traffic accident in 24. And that's the way oil specialists are looking at it. I think generalists look at it and go, oil's causing inflation, short the Nasdaq, go long oil stocks. And by the way, these things pay you.